Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome to RNG Pulse. Your week. You're muted. Oh, what? Every time. That... Every time, like the first like second or two oh, that it's you just... talk. So that's just a Skype thing. I'm not actually muted for the stream. Ah, okay. Skype, Shoot. Skype. It's just me. Skype doesn't like the fact that I have control of my audio outside of using Skype's mute button, right? Ah. It doesn't like that. It's confused by that. It thinks that I don't know. It knows you're a trader. I'm a trader. I'm a trader because I use an audio interface. <laughs> I'm glad you brought it up though because we forgot to check audio levels, and I'm just gonna make sure that we're we're nice, good, and balanced <laughs> here because. Um, yeah, but anyways, guys, hello and welcome to RG Pulse, the weekly show where we dive into all things tech and gaming. And this week is is mostly going to be gaming news in terms of uh, you know that discussion, as uh, there's not a whole lot of tech news. Yeah, you know it's funny the tech news it comes in waves. Although this week there was one one pretty exciting release that I'm uh which or not release, but but people are starting to talk about the Ryzen 7 5800 X3D. Mm. And man, that thing is apparently a monster when it comes to gaming performance. Uh, those don't launch, I think, until later in the month. Um, but this is AMD's new uh, new variant of the Ryzen 5800X, but with the 3D cache. Um, and it is just destroying the gaming benchmarks out there. So if you're running like a high refresh gaming rig uh, where you really need that extra CPU oomph to get every last frame, you're running like a 240 hertz or 360 hertz monitor playing esports titles, this bad boy will get the job done. That's awesome. I'm, I'm so, glad we're seeing more chips that are geared for gaming, right? You know, not just yeah. general chips that are good at gaming, but chips that are specifically tuned for that. Yeah, it's yeah, it's and gaming. It's funny. Yeah, gaming is where it like really, really excels the most, which is uh, which is pretty cool to see. Yeah, because now, I mean, the more options you have to kind of pick and choose based on what you're actually doing. And we'll mm -hmm. be talking about this more today with the Zephyr M16. Yeah, um, that's just that's just a really nice position to be in as a as a buyer and a builder of PCs. So. It is a good position to be in as a builder in general or buyer right now because GPU's availability keeps getting better. I, I think we've mm -hmm. got more news coming soon just for like, I think we've got like even a microsite coming out just because um, GPU availability is, it, it feels like it's finally a thing. It feels like you can actually finally go buy a graphics I got card. one. I got my 3060 Ti. Yeah. It is installed. Did I tell you what I had to do to go through this? I think we were talking about this last week on Pulse like because I was waiting for it to come in and I was so excited to install it. And I've gotten the KO edition uh, so I could fit it in my mini ITX PC. Mm -hmm. Well, while the KO was technically the within the specifications of this particular case, um, it is uh, it, it was a challenge to fit in through no fault of the KO. This is what mini ITX building is, especially yeah. when you have these really tiny boutique cases. I had to take the case apart and then rebuild the case around the GPU in order to get it to stay <sighs> in. It is just exactly the right size to fit in like the chamber for the GPU. It's perfect and it looks amazing, but man, uh, that case did not make it easy on me. <laughs> I, I only assisted like with one part of a mini ITX build at PC DIY day when we did that at the Asus office in America. And they needed help. Um, I don't know if it was putting the GPU in or threading the cables to the GPU. I think it was getting the cables yeah. in. Needless to say, I somehow managed to cut myself twice and bleed <laughs> a lot. So the blood <laughs> sacrifice was was there. Um, it was real. And that was in the Z11, right? The ROG yes. Z11 case. Yeah. Which and is not that actually, small. It's, it's not actually that. You but know, when it comes we to were, some of the ITX cases out there that are so, so freaking tiny that you can't even get like a super high performance card in it. Like the Z11 was designed to be small while allowing for... We put a Strix know, 3080 in it. So. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you can't fit a Strix 3080 in a lot of these really, really tiny cases. No, you cannot. Um, so there's always like that balancing act. And yeah, trust yeah. me, it gets even more difficult and frustrating when you get to the really, really small cases. Was it worth it? I don't know. But this PC is running 1440p like a champ now. So I'm happy. Um, so to all the questions in chat, we don't have any like updates for you guys in terms of release dates for things. There are, and it varies by every region. 
Um, I, I I luckily just got the Zephyrus Duo in. I, oh. I've been I've been playing with it. I'm in love with it. The hinge is gorgeous. We're going to be showcasing that on stream soon, but today that is not the focus. Today we are going to be diving into the M16, which is this bad boy right here. But we'll wait. We'll wait just a, just a little bit longer before we actually get into the. I will the tease though, guys. The M16 baller this year. It's gorgeous. Uh, and it's got it such is... a nice aesthetic to it. Yeah, I feel like last year the G15 got so much attention, um, but this year the M16, which is basically the G15 but with an Intel processor, is Team blue, really kicking some major butt. Huge step forward with all this new 12th gen tech. Um, so it's actually really, really, really compelling. Yeah. So stick around for that. There is, there is, yeah, a lot of cool cases for it. I'm, I'm a duo fanboy. I'm, I was just saying to Whitson, <laughs> like, I'm going to PAX East next, next week, and I'm like trying to figure which laptop I want to pack so that I can keep the Elden Ring grind going in my hotel room, you know, in between the, the days. How are you not finished with uh, this game yet? Dude, I, Feral Paw, who's always, always in here watching our streams, and he's very good at, like, some people are good at, um, giving advice without spoiling some people are really bad at that and streaming <laughs> yeah he's really good at just being like hey just so you know you missed this like if you want to go, go back left. he's like yeah yeah it's, <laughs> it's without being like annoying like oh but did, did you know that there's a chest you missed that could have given you the the talisman plus of, three yeah talisman it's like of... it's, I, don't, I don't i don't want your like super high level but feral paw is awesome shout out to that guy he's been very good at like so he just sent me a dm he's like jake just just look at this map and just compare it to what you've actually seen and i'm like oh crap because like i'm i kind of get that i'm I've like you know i could assume that there might be stuff there and i can assume there might be stuff here but once i looked at the map it's like all right i've got a lot of work left to do so for someone that's trying to not 100 percent the game but at least see close, most of yeah what, i want to go yeah. to i want to do my best to get close to 100 percent. i don't care if i get every achievement um it's 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 one of a, i have never in my life played a single player game this much ever period wow. the end it is the most i've ever played a single player game i'm 85 hours in um usually when i play a game like mass effect i don't do side missions i do the main story i go through i enjoy it i you know you missed out on some great mass effect then i'm sure i did a few of the side missions were the, really, these, really good a lot of them were uh, okay I, and i don't know if this is like my brain is is so dependent on strong visuals where Elden Ring really has me like immersed and it could be my PG 32 UQX. That could be part of the story. The HDR I've got this, in Elden Ring is very yeah, good. I've got this ridiculously gorgeous display. So I'm like mega immersed. And when I play it, I don't want to put it down. Um, anyways. Yeah. So I, I, I I've also been trying to avoid spoilers. And so I haven't like, I know that, my, my understanding, at least, is that there are like five major, major bosses and you only have to kill three of them to like, quote unquote, beat the game, like beat the story. Right. Is that accurate? Mm -hmm. um, and so I know that I assume that maybe there are some areas that are completely optional and that you don't even need to visit to beat the game. So it's possible that that's part of what's going on and I may not. I don't know if I'm going to look to 100% this game. But the other thing that I'm curious about is because I have looked at like some of these um, kind of recommended progression routes or like level recommendations just to kind of make sure that I'm not like screwing myself over. And it feels like it looks like I'm like nearing having uncovered half of the maps in the game. Mm -hmm. But no. but <laughs> that doesn't I'm like, so do the areas just get bigger because there's a difference between half of the number of maps and half of the total area of the world. There's, have you gone underground? I have gone underground twice, actually. Okay. okay. Um, um, there's, there's <laughs> then like islands and like it, it's, it's just elusive, right? It's yeah. It's okay. It, it, it looks, I don't know. It just keeps getting bigger and bigger. It feels to me. Um, there's multiple snow areas. Um, there's mm, Skyrim style. Yeah. Well, by it, the time I'm done with this, uh, 305 buddy love says they do get bigger. Yeah. So that makes sense. So yeah. that I, cause you can uncover half the maps in the world, but I'm definitely not halfway through the game. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, so I, my only assumption could be that the maps just keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, and I could definitely see by the time I'm done having played this more than any other single player game as well. My top one probably is Skyrim, and that's only like a hundred some hours. This will come closer, beat it. 
and this makes me kind of sad I didn't get into Skyrim when it was relevant. I'm really not someone They're that's completely good at, different games. I know, but I still feel like I could have gotten pretty immersed in that if I gave it a chance, and I just didn't. Oh, for sure. Um, it's just a different... It's immersed for, like, different reasons. The gameplay is very different. Honestly, Elden Ring kind of reminds me more of Morrowind in the sense that it's, like, just this huge open world, no quest markers, no quest log. You just go explore, and there's so much depth that you feel like you're never really scratching the surface. That's not really true of Skyrim. Skyrim's a little bit more accessible, whereas Morrowind is a little bit more like Elden but Ring. let's... Can we... I mean, this is turning into an Elden Ring podcast, but I think that's fine for a little bit. Um, can we just talk about the whole year. how, how, how uh, compelling it is and interesting it is to see a game that breaks the norms of what we're seeing in pretty much all other games, where... There is this really complex in your face HUD with with like a radar and a mini map and a quest log and a quest I tracker the HUD and, Elden Ring and, disappears. and there's like there's like you know so many components to a HUD and like going and checking your log and reading a lot of text and doing all, and this game is just you in the world and NPCs that you can find and engage with and then you have to remember what they tell you you can retalk to them to learn what they said and try to figure out where you're supposed to try to go. And again, I'm playing this game without Googling anything. So I'm right. I'm going full on organic. That makes it hard. Like, yeah, just like I need to just figure it out. And it's it's all very doable. It's not like it's tons of like riddles. It's I mean, there are some, but it's a lot uh, of riddles. Uh, I don't think yeah. I could ever play it like that. Cause even like back in the day when I was playing Ocarina of Time or Morrowind or games like that, where you did have to kind of figure things out for yourself, I was using players' guides or like talking to friends on the playground, right? And that's kind of what is compelling me about Elden Ring. Like I love that yeah. aspect of it. Like the hunting things down outside the game in addition to exploration inside the game. Like, and then getting it excited. Like it harkens back yeah. to the old days of gaming. Well, you're, in, yeah, in okay. it does. It does. Well, that's exactly what this game is. It's completely broken this this current mold. I mean, a few years ago, we had major game devs saying people don't want single-player games anymore, right? We just like literally had this mentality where it felt that way. But obviously, um, if they're done right, uh, yeah, it's really, it's yep. really, really great. But anyways, Elden Ring. We had a good... Good question from Anubis says, how are the PG-32 UQX black levels compared to an OLED? Uh, they're, well, they're really depending good. on which part of the screen you're looking at, the black levels will be equivalent to an <laughs> OLED, right? So it's it's all about the scene that's on, on the screen. Mm. Um, because if you're in like a dark area and the local dimming on that PG-32 UQX is dimmed down real far, um, or there's an area that's completely black, it's going to have the same black levels in OLED zero. Right. It's just not going to have that in smaller areas that um, are like medium, you know, shades or have like a really bright spot next to a black spot. Like that black is going to be lighter than the black in the big dark area because of the way that that mini LED technology works. I, I will say I that very <laughs> with HDR enabled, it is beyond ridiculous. And I'd say it looks better than my OLED. Um, so it, it's brighter. So the that's, difference, that's like, why, cause you got, you have, you have more, uh, light. To more so it just feels like a pop and high detail almost? there. Almost like, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You also, so I always, um, with my TV and my monitor, I use a bias light because I don't like a bright monitor shining in my eyes in complete darkness. I know a lot of people like that. Um, I need a little bit of ambient light in the room, and that that bias light really helps um, make the blacks look darker on an LED too. So if, if you're that kind of person that isn't gaming in pitch black, um, I would argue that the mini LED might even be more compelling than an OLED. I, I do personally there's, there's prefer case. LED myself. Um, I could have bought an OLED TV. I've owned an OLED TV before, but I went for LED because I love that really high brightness. I love um, I love the, the motion for TVs. That's, that's so for monitors. That's mm -hmm. important. And we do have some OLED monitors coming out later this year that I'm really excited to check out. Me too. It's going to be fun to, to dive into those, and we'll, we'll be sure to cover them here in the stream whenever we can. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it is a glorious display. There are a, uh, almost a little more than 11,000 zones on the PG-32 UQX 305, buddy. It's uh, 1152 zones. Hmm. So it's a lot of zones. It's not It's not like uh, some of the TVs out there that have like, you know, 20 or 30 zones. And right. a lot of those can still be pretty good. But like we're talking about a lot of zones on this monitor because it's mini LED. So, so now that we're completely off topic. Yeah, let's roll, let's roll with some gaming news. So one game that just got... Um, I guess I'll, I'll turn down the, the wub wubs because we're getting some nice techno music from this trailer. Um, there is a new Gundam first person shooter and it's 
like 6v6 class base, so it's literally Gundam Overwatch. Um, so this is your game, Woodson. This, this is it. <laughs> I like it. I like I like Gundams. I like Overwatch. It it looks really fun. I did get into the beta, which which ends tomorrow. I think I haven't had a chance to fire it up yet. What are these subtitles? Get out of here. Um, but no, I, I mean I find it really interesting. It doesn't necessarily like look like it's in outer space or anything, but I think in terms of balance, um, this is fine. Right? I mean, Gundam obviously takes place in a multiple multitude of locations. These are. It just seemed it's it's an interesting idea. Like I, I never really saw Gundam as an FPS game. There's plenty of guns available that make it work, but didn't. But is it like is it really an FPS or is it like kind of an SPF slash like oh, melee type? Like I'm Overwatch, pretty sure because right? you... Gundams really use both. They're clearly swinging. I think this is straight up Overwatch, right? So you've got like the Reinhardt, you know, where you can pull out your shield and you go into third person. And I think you're going to have skills like that. But at the core of it, the gameplay looks like it is. Yeah, right. First so it feels person like shooter. a first person shooter. But yeah. Gundams, some Gundams have guns. Some Gundams have swords. And this some have both. <laughs> yeah, I guess. I mean, but the thing is, is any Gundam can pick up a gun. Right. So if you think of like yes. Wing Zero, yeah, that's true. you don't traditionally think of Wing Zero as wielding a gun, but can he kill another, you know, Gundam or another mech, uh, you know, and take their gun? Of course. They, mobile suit is the correct term, Jake. Mobile suit. I know. God, I was trying to think of it. I haven't watched <laughs> any Gundam in a long time. However, there was, a, either. there was a, a trailer I saw on YouTube the other day for a new, it's called like Scarlet or something, Gundam, a new show. It's just like a eight second teaser, but it, it got me. It's all I needed. It like ha the aesthetic right. was different. It looked a little, a little bit darker, a little bit more of a. I mean, for me, animation style is a big part of whether or not I like a show. Looked good. Um, Gundam. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but but Jake, what about bug snacks on PC? What bug about snacks, bug snacks? Bug on... snacks. It's here. It's coming to PC. It's coming to Steam and Game Pass. Get on it. Just so though, I actually I have not played Bug Snacks, but I've heard lots of good things. It's supposedly actually a pretty fun romp, uh, and it is finally leaving its PlayStation. I'm like debating plaguing see. chat with the Bug Snacks song right now. <laughs> I think I'm gonna pass on. I'll I'll, I'll save you guys. Um, yeah, I, this is interesting. I guess I don't know. I I didn't know Bug Snacks had a player base. To be honest with you. Uh, and it seems that it does. This Bug Snacks, if you guys don't know, was a, <laughs> a launch title for the PS5. And historically, when a new console comes out, generally speaking, most of the new console launch titles are meh. Meh. And Bug Snacks was one of those. I'm not trying to shame you, Bug Snacks, but you were not anything I was interested in. It was just kind of one of those games where it's like, okay, it's a game. Um,. I think Bug Snacks was a little more than meh. I think people liked Bug Snacks. Did they? Okay. I mean, I'm. We had a couple meh launch titles, but we had a couple pretty good ones too. We had Returnal, which was pretty big. Miles Morales was big. Bug Snacks Miles was like. Miles Morales Bug Snacks is, got some attention. is a fraction of the amount of game as the other Spider Man, though. It's, it's true. You're it, right. It, but it's a great, still, great game. Loved it's it. It's a good launch title, it, and it did a really good job of, like most launch titles, uh, showcasing the new tech. Yeah, like it had yeah, ray tracing yeah. and all yeah, that fair. stuff, right? Um, like if if I didn't get the PS4 Spider Man with Miles Morales when I purchased it, I would have been very upset with my. Oh, purchase. I actually didn't. I yeah. just got Miles Morales. I would. Been... I will say, it was short, but I kind of enjoyed it. I enjoyed Miles's power set more. I thought he was more fun to play as than Peter. Interesting. Um, I think the first one was overall a better game. It has a much bigger story. I I. I like the non-winter setting a little bit better, I think, and you get to do all this different stuff. But Miles, as just Spider-Man to Spider-Man, Miles was more fun to kick butt with because huh. of the stinger power and the invisible power. Adds a little bit more complexity it, to kind of like your yeah. strategy in every battle, which I liked. Spider-Man 2 will give us the best of both. Um, so Here's hoping. Yeah, looks looks really good. But so Bug Snacks. Bug Snacks. Just yeah, saying, I've, Bug Snacks is on PC. Great. Everything we ever <laughs> dreamed of. Um... No Man's Sky gets another. I hear it's a fun co-op game. So there you go. Okay. We all okay. we always need more co-op games. I mean, if you, if you like Bug Snacks, I'm happy for you. 
I just I, I, I that bug sack song when I saw the trailer, I was dying laughing. Would you say it bugs you? Oh my goodness. You're the worst. Get out of here. Get off my show. <laughs> Kingdom Hearts uh, Kingdom Hearts celebrates twenty years anniversary where they showed us Several more mobile games that will make as as much sense as every other Kingdom Hearts game has made sense. Um, <laughs> and then they gave us Anime Sora and Kingdom Hearts 4. He's he's a cute waifu now. I, I have nothing to add to this discussion because I have played no Kingdom Hearts games. Uh, the entirety of my Kingdom Hearts knowledge is the, the donkey video. That's, I mean, it's that's, explaining the story. That's all you need right there i that's kind of my understanding yeah, like that's yeah. yeah i always thought it looked cool though and i know some people are really into it i'm excited that they're bringing it back because it's been a while right kingdom hearts 3 came out like a year ago and it was oh atrocious people hated it maybe that's because then maybe that's why i think it was a long time ago because yeah. i don't well, kingdom hearts 3 is like fairly it, there was like a decade gap between two and three okay right so, okay so there was like a huge gap but three Kingdom came Hearts out 3 was probably like on a year ago briefly. and it was not well received um i fondly remember the original games but i was never uh a fanboy the way some people are um uh, but you know if that's your jam then hopefully kingdom hearts 4 is better than three because i just i have friends that are huge kingdom hearts fans like arano he's in chat a lot he loves kingdom hearts but he hated three like extreme disappointment for him so um anyways <laughs> kingdom Hearts 4 was announced it's kind of surprising after like you know they had such a long break to go into three and then now four but we'll see what they do with that um and then the other the only other thing is like hello games is the creators of no man's sky they've obviously been supporting this game for a long time releasing lots of dlc they actually went and tweeted saying they have a new project that is so ambitious and so ambitious that even with a 1000 person team they don't know if it would be possible so i don't know what that means um it's, it's a pretty bold it's words pretty, for yeah, them to say given yeah, after their launch with with no, it's like why are you even saying this is kind of what i said like just just wow people <laughs> like bring release a project and wow people there's no benefit to making a statement like that especially after um you know you've gone through a, a nice little redemption arc i'm, I'm proud of you yeah. Hello games right but that statement is just like so what do you gain from saying this like we're cool and we're doing something cool Okay, but now if you drop the ball, all you've done is set yourself up for disappointment. Well, they must be really confident they're not dropping the ball. I, I hope so. Get ready. No Man's Sky, like, you know, they've got, they just added bounties and they added uh, a bunch more PvP stuff, it looks like. And uh, the ship combat looks like it's been evolved a little bit. So um, I, I feel like I need to dive back in. Uh, but bef we're getting close to transitioning to like our main segment. It is giveaway time. We're Give firing it up. Time. Now, everyone in, in stream, the rules are same as always. We do marbles on stream for the giveaway, meaning marbles on stream is plugged into our Twitch chat. So if you have to go to twitch.tv slash Asus ROG, the session is going to start on screen in just a moment. And then when you see it, you need to type exclamation mark play in the game to join that chat. There's the bug snack song that I'm not going to play for everyone. <laughs> and marbles is choosing to. Not there we go. Marbles, why aren't you full screen? There we go. Guardian of the Marbles. Karen says, Ryzen 9 5900X and RX 6800M are awesome. Oh, <gasps> you see this? You see this? Oh, oh. Ready, ready? I was gonna say, it kind of <laughs> looks like the back of a M16. <laughs> it was, it was meant to be. It was. Well, I'm pretty sure I'm looking at the same thing, right? Yeah, you really are. The like, the like rainbow shimmer is like exactly like the prismatic effect on the back of the M16. That's perfect. You didn't even plan this. No. That's Calculated. amazing. Oh my goodness! Whoa. <laughs> Okay, you guys are Visits. in for a treat. So again, enter by typing exclamation mark play in Twitch chat, and that'll give you a chance to win a $20 voucher <laughs> to gamesplanet.com, us.gamesplanet.com. If you guys need like 15 or 20 seconds. 
Whitson, what are you playing? Are you still grinding the Elden Ring? Are you I'm taking still a break? Grinding the Elden Ring. I don't want to take a like. I, there are a couple games that I want to check out, but I'm afraid to take a break because every time I take a break from a game and come back, I like forget it's, how I to know. play it. And that is not something you can do with Elden Ring. Like you can't forget how to play it. You have to keep getting better, or you're screwed. <laughs> so um, that, that's kind of like what I had to tell myself about Tiny Tina's Wonderlands. It's like I just need to like come back to this game and start over because it seems like a game that's 1000 percent worth my time i was laughing so much you know, i know i'm like considering doing a single player run on it yeah. later this yeah. year but, but I, I i just can't i need to i need to just buckle down yep i can't let my eyes wander to other <laughs> games uh you know you must stay true i must and i must stay faithful to elden ring i'm i'm really enjoying it though like i've i've gotten to the point where I've like gotten some cool new spells and um, things are starting to get a little bit more like strategic and mm -hmm. um, I've gotten a lot new like spirit summons, which has also made things a little bit easier. Yep. Maybe a little too easy in some circumstances, yeah, some but fights like my mimic is just so cheesy. I love it. I know. So I, but at the same time, I know there are other fights around where I can't use those and I can't be on the horse. Like the, True. True. what do they call it? Like the ever, the ever goals or whatever. Yep. Like there are a bunch of those in Lear Learning of the Lakes where I am, and I haven't touched them yet. And I know that if I want to just spend like three hours on a boss, I can go to one of those and have a, a true Elden Ring experience. Um, oh my goodness! But I'm heading through the uh, the Ray Lucaria Academy right now. Oh, nice! That's fun. That's where you're going to get all your mage loot. Yeah. Well, I hear that the mage loot there isn't really that great, and that you basically should just stick with the starting loot or the starting gear you have uh, up through like mid to late game. I'm still using the same sword. Actually, with, I finally... With the exception of the sword, there's a sword in Rei Lucaria that scales with intelligence instead of dexterity. So if I want like a sword in my left hand alongside my staff, like this sword is oh, actually oh, Disco Ninja. really good. Nope. Who's it going to be? Oh, Spawn for EG. Spawn. Uh, didn't Spawn just win like a week or two ago? I mean, yeah. A lot of these people nice. have, have won recently, but that's okay. Very nice. That's okay. Congrats, Spawn. Um, Congrats, Spawn. Yeah. So in Elden Ring, I've used the Blood Bloodhound's finesse for like forever, and I recently had to go onto this like big tree branch where it's really easy to fall off. Like I'm just like in this <laughs> giant tree, and the attack is like you know you dive backwards like with an upward slash and then you dive back in and I fell off immediately and I was like all right. I'm finally going to try out this katana I got that everybody says is really good. Oh. And now that I swapped, I'm like, because it's like people just people in chat were like, yo, I use that sword. It's super good. I'm like, all right, let me try it out. That's my peer review is Twitch chat, right? <laughs> and um, it's it's uh, it's good. It's really good. So and I'm having fun with it. I only I, spend 120 uh, levels with one sword, right? Yeah. I mean, I was just using like a regular sword very occasionally. And I switched to Roger's like a uh, rapier which oh, is yeah, more of like yeah. a stab stab as yep. opposed to like big slashing. And it's actually really nice because it's super quick, uh, which is, which is nice. But yeah, the magic sword, I probably have to switch to the magic sword. Alrighty. Well, spawn for EG. Congratulations on your $20 voucher to games, .com. We will have one more giveaway in about a half hour, give or take. I'll put, I'll put 25 minutes on the clock for now. We'll play it by ear. Um, <laughs> But we can jump right in. Let's talk about this bad boy. All right, look at that man. Your ca Prismatic. camera is really. Some of the sometimes that stuff is hard to capture on camera. But no, it is. I was uh, really tinkering with the light settings to try to try to get it the best. Oh I really? Because like like you said, nice. like this really stands out in person, but on camera it is oftentimes it stands out but it's also like kind of subtle so like man i don't know where to start with this machine there are so many cool things to talk about and i don't really know where to start and the the place that i keep coming back to is what i mentioned earlier that the, the last year the zephyrus g15 um was very well regarded mm -hmm. it's an amazing machine um it is a 15 inch kind of thin and light gaming laptop um, this year we've improved it with our new Nebula display. Um, we don't have one of those to show off right now. I wish we could show it off with this, but, um, we don't have it yet. And it, it was basically heralded by some as like one of the best gaming laptops you could buy, if not the best gaming laptop you could buy. And I feel like the M16 is, is, is not 
getting the attention it deserves because it's basically the G15, <laughs> but with an Intel chip. Yeah. And and a bigger screen, which we'll show off in a moment. Um, Slightly. Now, I know I know Ryzen was like kind of the, the new hotness for a while, but now that we have Intel 12th gen, the M16 has taken a huge leap forward. And so if you weren't looking, if you were thinking about the G15 and you weren't looking at this machine before, you should be looking at both of them because they are both really compelling. Um, we've talked about Intel 12th gen a lot. Uh, you know, you've got these performance cores and efficiency cores alongside one another. Um, 14 that, cores in total. Yes, so it's 14 cores in total on this machine. Um, yeah, now I'm kind of jumping around here, our, our little That's list okay. of stuff. Yeah. Uh, depending on the, C the CPU, you get, you get 14 cores total. Um, some of those are high performance cores. Some of those are efficiency cores. You're going to get really great performance yep. while also getting really good battery life when you're performing more low power tasks and things like that. Yep. Um, it's really great for creators, right, as well. So I know you, Jake, have been, like, lusting over these Intel 12th Gen chips. They're just so good, uh, <laughs> especially for content creation, right? You know, there's a lot of horsepower to be tapped into. Um, you got PCI 4.0 with these as well, so that's really nice. Yep. So this specifically the processor we're talking about this is the the top end processor you can get is the Intel i9 12900H um so that's six performance cores and eight efficiency cores um so you actually have a total of 20 threads which is pretty sweet um and uh, up to 5 gigahertz i believe um Secrets. don't quote me on that so this is really, really awesome. If you're gaming and you want to do some creation on the side, or I mean, honestly, the, the i9-12900H is just a kick-ass gaming processor to begin with. Um, and the the other, the, the chassis is really similar to the G15, but that prismatic uh, lid is a little bit different. So instead of like the anime matrix or some mm -hmm. of the more flashy things you see in the, on the G series, it's just this kind of subtle shine that stands out while also being kind of um professional right like so if you're looking for a laptop you want you can use at the office or in class without it kind of screaming gaming the way that some other machines do right. this is actually a really really nice machine that isn't it's not too bland though right it's not just like a straight aluminum no adornments like some laptop manufacturers that I won't mention. It's just like a straight silver box, right? It's got a little bit of that flair, but just enough. And I love that about this. I think that makes it such a cool machine and that really like attracts me to it. I actually prefer the aesthetic of this over the enemy matrix personally. And there is this, I mean, I'm not saying the enemy matrix uses a lot of energy, but it does use some, you can disable that if that's what you're going for. And some people want that personality. But, you can also only, you can also only have the enemy matrix on when it's plugged in, things like that. True, true. But I, I, I personally like, I just don't think I would like that as much as just the shimmer. The shimmer looks cool. It's eye catching without being as, as personable so you just see that you're like oh that's cool it's, it's hard cool. i might have said that once upon a time but then i actually got to use the enemy matrix and okay. now i'm like yeah animated things i think I, all <laughs> i'm, like I'm so glad the, the enemy matrix evolving though because i've got the strix flare 2 animate keyboard and i actively get to see the enemy matrix here whereas on a yeah. laptop it's more for other people to see so it's yeah. the kind of thing where i prefer to like look at it um, I get it. Everyone Whereas has the their M16, own preference, right? You get to see that prismatic film all the time. Oh, yeah. And you just like, yeah, sometimes I just play with it in the light and just look at it. No. Um, but yeah, let's just kind of talk about a few other things. So this is a this is a 16 by 10 screen, right? Um, so the M16. And that's the other big difference 16. from the G15, by the way. The G15 is 16 by 9. This actually extends the screen a little bit into the chin, despite being in a very, very similarly sized chassis. So the M16 is not uh, a whole inch bigger than the G15 like like the yeah. name might make it sound just the screen is bigger and it's just got this insane like 95 percent screen to body ratio and when you really open the screen um it elevates the pc uh, with with the the hinge here it's kind of hard to tell but that with that elevation you get really nice airflow underneath the machine just kind of lifts it up with these little elbows so that's our little that's our ergo lift hinge um and you can see that on zen books and stuff too we're now doing this across our laptop line yeah it's got these little rubber feet so when you lift it up you, it's hard to show it but the, the the chassis actually lifts up a little bit too so you get a little bit of an incline on the keyboard for easier typing and more fresh air on the bottom which is awesome for cooling better yeah better thermals as a whole um but that's i mean and i i'll tell you 
I, uh, I bought a 16 by 10 monitor like 10 years ago or something. And it's hard to go back to 16 by nine after having used 16 by 10, 16 by 10 is just awesome. That little bit of extra real estate is mm-hmm. super nice. It is nice. Um, especially cause like, you know, when you're reading long documents and things like that, it's just a little bit, a little bit extra, um, or editing video and things like that too, for that matter. Yeah. Now, so. Speaking of the display, uh, this is not the same 16-inch display as last year. This is our new Nebula display. So this one in particular is a QHD, so it's 1440p, but like actually a little bit taller than 1440p, uh, 165 hertz, 3 millisecond response time. Um, it is brighter. So you got, I think, 500 nits on this bad boy with 100% DCI-P3 color space and adaptive sync and Dolby Vision and Pantone validation for accurate colors. This display is like uh, kind of, you know, apart from the mini LED display we have on the Duo, this is like kind of what we view as an ideal laptop gaming display. It's fast, it's bright, it's vivid. We wanted to kind of pack all of those things into a display rather than some of the laptops you see out there that are only 250 nits or don't go that high in refresh rate, all these kinds of things. Um, We wanted this to kind of be like the, the ideal to strive for. And, you know, something that we don't talk about as often with laptops to go with that display, it actually has really good speakers. There's six speakers yeah. on the device. And it just like I, I found like I was just kind of cranking some music on it earlier. I just wanted to check it out, see what the audio is like. And I was rather impressed. So, um, yeah. And that's base. not always a given with laptops. Right? No, it is um, not. It is not. So. That's really nice. Uh, to finish off the internal hardware, we talked about that Intel i9, um, but you can also get up to a RTX 3080 Ti in this this year. Yep. We've upped the GPU. You can now get an RTX 3080 Ti. Uh, we've got f- up to 48 gigs of DDR5 RAM, uh, up to two terabytes of SSD storage, although there's also an extra slot in there. So you can open up the laptop yourself, pop in a second SSD if you want to expand the storage, mm. and you can upgrade the RAM yourself too. Uh, if you want. So that's really cool. We got some actual questions. Carabinog Rabbit is asking, can you power the laptop via USB-C? Yes, you can. However, unlike or um, like our other laptops, if you want the full gaming power um, of a lot of these machines, you do want to use the higher wattage. Yeah, uh, you, get you get 100 watts from the USB-C, comes with it. right? 100 watts isn't bad, right? Not and, at all. And you're, you're still going to get, if you're just trying to charge, you're going to get up to 50% in 30 minutes. Um, because it, it is powerful enough for that, but it's not your end all solution. It's a, it's an option for you, but you, right. You, so you... he's saying USB-C chargers are much more portable. Yeah, they are. Yeah. Um, and that's kind of what they're good for. If you're taking this to class or something, right. You're in a college class, you're taking this to class. You even can bring an, that USB-C charger. Airplane, right? You'll be fine you know? yeah. on an airplane. Yep. If you're, um, or, you know, maybe even a short trip, you can, you can use that to plug it in, or you can plug it into uh, a portable, um, power bank. That's what to me is really great about the USB-C charging. That's true. If you're planning on doing gaming with it, you're going to want to bring that bigger, uh, power adapter with you. And I would argue that if you're doing gaming with it, you're going somewhere where you probably have the room to pack something like that. Um, in most cases. So that's what, uh, that's at least what I would recommend if you're playing and doing gaming, you want to, you could game on battery power or on the USB C, but you're not going to get the full power of the machine necessarily. You won't be able to put it into turbo mode. You won't get necessarily the full wattage, um, unless you're plugged in. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, just, just a few other questions just about pricing and stuff. There are various models and various uh, options for GPUs. So someone's asking, can you get it with a 3070? Yes, you can, but you can you go can. up and to it. In fact, a... you can get it with a 3060. And I think they're even, depending on your region, a 3050 Ti version. Yeah, so it this this will vary region to region. Every country chooses what models they're going to carry. Um, but this one right here has a 3080 Ti. We, we go big here. <laughs> so yeah i mean if you're looking at a 3060 version i think in the u.s they're like um Eight, like around 18 i don't want to give an exact msrp because i don't know but i think it's like around the 1800 range for yeah. one of the models i was looking at at uh best buy um and, and then, then if you're going all the way up to the 30 ti obviously it's going to be more expensive it, it, they go this is this machine right here is 3200 dollars msrp in the u.s so this okay, is yeah so this is go. the i will but this be, is the cream of yeah, the crop this is the top dog yeah 
apart from the Zephyrus duo, this is like, you know, I mean, yeah. you're, you're, you're eschewing the dual screen, but this is still in terms of power and size and everything is one of the best, uh, thin and light gaming laptops around <laughs> ML Paladin says turbo mode. Does it have a turbo button like the old 486s? Uh, kind of. Right, uh, in Armory Crate, yeah, right here. In Armory Crate, there's a there's a turbo mode that allows uh, uh, more wattage to the GPU and allows the fans to ramp up more. And unfortunately, this isn't on the M16, but on this on some Strix models, there is a button that you can press to put it into turbo mode. So it's almost like an old 486 PC, except on those old 486 PCs, the turbo button oftentimes slowed down the computer, which was confusing. Is the Strix 3060 Ti the best 3060 Ti? Yeah, I think so. You better believe it. The, the cooler, the cooler, we talked about this last week. Uh, I don't even know how to pronounce your name. Yuzix Kali. Go check out our episode last week. We break down the difference between um, all of our different GPU lines. The Strix line has the biggest cooler, the highest TGP, the highest overclocks, all that good stuff. In my opinion, it's the best way to go for the noise levels alone, but then also for the performance. <laughs> um, yeah, for sure. So uh, a couple more things on this. We've got Thunderbolt 4 with Type-C charging. We talked about that. 90-watt-hour yep. battery. The battery life on this model um, is going to be a boost from last year. It should be because of that Intel 12th gen processor. Um, so that's really nice. You're going to get a little bit more efficiency out of it. You've got Wi-Fi 6E for super fast the stream is stuttering for me and i'm my, starting to my, worry my computer is having a little stroke right now okay <laughs> it's, it seems to have gotten over it that was it that was interesting it's... yeah <laughs> um and you've got a webcam with windows hello which is really nice guys i gotta tell you if you have not used windows hello to log into your computer with the webcam total game changer I mean, we have this on phones now where you just kind of look at your phone and it logs you in. But for some reason, that's more exciting to me on Windows than it is on phones. Like the first time I did it, I was like, what? That was so fast. So that's on here. And too. it even like maybe I got more excited about it than I needed to. But I was little, just like, well, it's, it's also nice to know when it's doing it. Little red light flashes next to the webcam saying, hey, look, I'm, I'm logging you. And a little eye looking for you on the on the screen. So, yeah, it's like Sauron in your computer. What else can you ask? For? But like a cartoony Sauron. Um, the soft touch coating is, uh, we've designed to be as fingerprint resistant as we can, which is nice, especially for these kind of darker models. Mm -hmm. Um, and the keyboard, the keyboard is awesome. You've got 1.7 millimeters of travel. It's nice and springy and key rollover. I love the keyboards on these Zephyrus models. One of the first things in a lot of thin and lights that you see to get sacrificed for size is the keyboard. And I hate that. I hate it when the key travel is like, you know, 0.2 millimeters or something because they're trying to make the laptop as thin as possible. We managed to keep this thing pretty thin, but give it a good deep key travel, which is, in my opinion, crucial for gaming and typing for that matter. Um, because when you have really shallow key travel, it just kind of starts to hurt your fingers after a while. You feel like you're just pounding on wood. Um, yeah, no, so it's, I'm, it's very comfortable. I, I'm, a keyboard and trackpad nerd. Like if a laptop has a bad keyboard or trackpad, I will just throw it out. I'm like, this is a one out of 10. Um, and these, these on the Zephyrus, they're excellent. I'm very picky. It's a gorgeous this device. Um, like I was saying earlier, I'm, I'm torn if I'm bringing this or the duo to Boston with me for PAX East next week, because I do like my Intel CPUs. But the duo has that second screen. <laughs> it's a tough call. The duo, yeah. I, I mean, think I think I'm team duo. Sorry, I'm 16. You're awesome. And yeah. The duo is probably gonna be our next episode of Pulse, but we'll see. I'm hoping so. I'm hoping so. Um so yeah, that's the that's the M16. Mm -hmm. And I just I really want to urge people to look at this one a little bit closer, especially if you're considering the G15, both of these should be on your short list. Um, the CPUs are kind of going toe to toe in performance, the two, the Ryzen and the Intel CPUs on these two models. So it's actually like kind of a tough decision. You know, if you want, um, kind of the, you, you know, the Ryzen CPUs are really great. If you want the kind of split performance and efficiency cores, um, especially if you're doing kind of content creation and stuff like that, the M16, uh, may be the machine to go with if you're just kind of looking at 
straight gaming or you want um you know the the core setup that ryzen has the g15 is good there and it has the anime matrix and things like that as well that that are compelling but honestly to me also the big screen is like the main selling yeah, point here I like, really like versus the g15 it's it's tough but that extra screen real estate is so nice and it's really hard to to go back once you get used to it i think this screen is kind of like as much as i love the dual screen with the duo i'm like i don't know if i'm actually going to be like doing any like crazy multitasking like streaming or anything for my hotel room in boston so it's like if i'm just trying to fill some time and play some elden ring this panel is gorgeous and Mm -hmm. i don't know but then again i might just be trying to hook it up to the hotel tv We'll see. We'll uh, see. That panel is going to be better than your hotel TV. Yeah, that's true. That's, that's the true. thing. It's yeah, like but... the hotel TV may be bigger, but you're going to sit closer to this, so it's still going to be immersive. And the the brightness and the contrast and the the DCI P3 color space on this, all that is going to be better than the jank hotel TVs that you usually see that are like ten years old. Right? There's no contest. Uh, got a couple questions regarding the G14. When will it be available in the U.S. in gray? Um, I don't have an answer to that. I, I don't believe that the gray G14 with the anime matrix is coming out in the U S at all at this all. year. Yeah. I don't know about a gray version without the anime matrix. I don't have an answer to that. Do we make speakers? No, but we make awesome headsets. Let me tell you. I, uh, yeah, Jake's got one too. Jake's got a different one. Which uh, also his RGB, has RGB. His RGB isn't on, but, but well, it's you know it's actually it's interesting that the RGB on this headset, and I, I actually like was playing around with it. It's only on the back, anyways, so you wouldn't see it on the stream. Oh, really? There's it's a not strip on the that's front? on the back. No, it's only on the back. I thought it was on the front too. No. Weird. Yeah. So it's yeah. just for people behind you to yeah. see. I mean, it just shines cool. this light where your butt is. Oh. Um, <laughs> unknown GPU says I currently own a G15 with a 1660 Ti. Great laptop on the go. Yeah, I. Fully agree. Uh, what is Strix Advantage Edition? That is last year's uh, all AMD Strix machine. The AMD Advantage GPU, Edition is AMD CPU. GPU, AMD CPU. That's the Advantage Edition was kind of the branding for that. So if you want one with an NVIDIA GPU, we have the Strix G. If you want one with an AMD GPU, you got the Strix Advantage Edition. Um, and those AMD GPUs are are so they're they're implementing some pretty cool stuff on the software side that I'm excited about. They're catching up. I mean. It's not like honestly these days it's not even like a catch up thing. It's like which one well, offers you the features that you want. That's that's where they're catching up though. Because like well, for me, yeah. NVENC encoding, those are all big selling points, right? Right? DLSS and AMD is is, is, is so on the here's, right path. Here's what I would argue. Catching up implies that they are um getting the same features on a delay. And in some areas, AMD is providing those features in a different way that makes them more unique than just Mm. we do the same stuff. So I look at FSR 2.0, which they have said is going to be a driver level upscaling feature. Um, You know, DLSS is only in the games that support it. FSR right now is only in games that have built in support for it. Having FSR 2.0, which is going to be a temporal solution at the driver level, that's not something NVIDIA has right now. And that's compelling. DLSS is really compelling if you're playing games that have it. But that FSR 2.0 is really compelling if you're playing games that don't have DLSS or FSR. And so that's where I see AMD starting to not just catch up, but differentiate themselves in a way that actually makes me go, "Uh, which one do I want? Which one do I want? And that is how you make a sweet, sweet product. I can't. I'm going to say it again. I can't wait to have an Intel CPU or GPU and an NVIDIA CPU. (laughs) I'm I'm going to make this abomination just just as soon as I can. Back to 10, 15 years ago, and tell yourself like weird stuff's going to happen in the future, man. That's (laughs) Um, that build's going to happen. I'll have to like. I I don't know. Build it inside out because it's going to be inside out. I'm yeah. I mean, I'm really curious to see what Intel does with their GPUs as well. So, and those should be out in some laptops kind of soon. I don't know yeah. if we have any. I can't say anything or because I literally don't know um, what we have coming down the pipe. But yeah, I know there's, I know there's always something, guys. There's always something. I, oh, a few other things we can point out about the M16, just like all of our other laptops, it has a MUX switch, and the MUX switch is, is a great yes. thing to, to utilize. Um, Dolby Atmos built into that, to that sound system, and also we have liquid metal. So this is liquid metal applied uh, to your CPU 
And you know, internally, we do this on every single laptop now. Used to be only, every single ROG laptop. Yeah. yeah, used to be, but yeah, 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 all, all ROG laptops. And on a couple, including uh, the G14, we now have it on the CPU and GPU, which is pretty sweet. And on the Strix models, we're using a new liquid metal that's even better. Um, but yeah, liquid metal on the CPU. Um, it's got this kind of interesting uh, fan design, actually, too, where it's we have these kind of like internal cutouts that guide the airflow to where it's actually needed. Instead of just like blowing air kind of randomly. Um, and so that's that's a nice feature of these two. They've really done a lot of good design work on the cooling of these laptops in recent years, um, especially because it's it's a, it's a big challenge with these thin and lights because you're packing these really high-end components to these really, really compact machines. Um, and so far, what I've seen with my G14 that I've been playing with, I've been very, very pleased hmm. um, with the cooling solution. And then with an Armory Crate, obviously, you have the choice to, to go for a performance mode where it ups the wattage and blows the fans a bit more when i'm just browsing the web and stuff like that i put it into silent mode so it's super super quiet and i can just type in peace um but yeah are we going to release a laptop gundam collab that would be sweet i mean we've done a lot of gundam products in the past i wouldn't say it's impossible but here you go take your g14 put a big gundam sticker on it You've got yourself an ROG yeah. Gundam or laptop. Anime the Matrix. Moonlight White version. Yeah, Anime Matrix. Just get a yeah, Gundam animation. Could, oh, man, you could put a Gundam animation on the Anime Matrix. That'd be sick. Yeah. And then get some Gundam stickers. There, you got a Gundam laptop. Easy peasy. Um, again, for the giveaway, we do this via Twitch chat. We do Marvels on stream, which is integrated Twitch chat. So if you want to partake in two minutes when we do the giveaway, go to twitch.tv slash ASUSROG to enter because um, we'll do the entries there. Um, oh, I think, okay, so there's some confusion. Advantage Edition is one specific Advantage laptop. Edition, he's asking about GPUs, desktop GPUs. Okay, Uz, oh. Uzex Kali, yeah, more pronounceable name. Uh, the Strix Advantage Edition is a <laughs> laptop. That is specifically one model of laptop that has an AMD CPU and GPU in yes. it. When you're looking at Strix GPUs for the desktop, there's no such thing as an Advantage Edition because they're, they're just GPUs. So you just want whatever Strix... Uh, GPU you want. If you want the 3060 Ti, you get the Strix 3060 Ti, and that is the only Strix 3060 Ti. Um, I mean, yeah. I, I think there was a V1 from earlier. The, the V2 is that you just linked in chat is the one that you want. Yeah. Sorry about the c confusion there. Uh, this, yeah, you're, that's a laptop thing versus a desktop thing. But yes, I do highly recommend the Strix cards. I've got one on my desktop. It's baller. Super quiet. Got sweet, sweet RGB. Highly performant. But that oh so you were asking last week Jake about the KO that yeah. I was put to my ITX machine you were asking what the thermals were like and stuff pretty good I mean it's a very very tiny hot case and uh, <laughs> so it's in the worst of all circumstances and it is very much holding well, its own it's a tiny hot case inside like another case inside right? my cabinet well yeah, sort of that's... so I, I took the side panel off the case entirely and so the door of the cabinet is kind of acting as the side panel Interesting. and i actually took the back part of that of the entertainment center off so it can so like can actually out of the back i was wondering yeah. what you had what you had so done, it's still not ideal it still doesn't have great airflow in there um but the the ko edition is actually cooling quite well it, it has just the dual fans it doesn't have the three fans like the strix and the tough but they're pretty big and it's got a thick heat sink mm. so it's actually cooling itself quite well especially compared to some of the other dual fan gpus i've had in the past um that are a little bit smaller that don't have the, the thick heat sinks and stuff like that the ko is actually quite good and it looks too cool for school if i could fit a strix in there i would but the ko is uh I'm I'm very pleased with its performance given given the the hot hot hell that I'm putting it through. <laughs> Elden Ring will do that to any GPU. I mean, although I will say that the stuttering seems to have stopped for me in the last patch. Lucky you, it has yeah. not stopped for so, me. But it's it's I mean it's not just it's also CPU too, right? Um, and in a case that small, the CPU heat can yeah. also like they kind of affect each other. And so at this point, my fan noise is not even from the GPU. My fan noise is from my CPU fan. I think I need to get a bigger CPU heatsink because I have like a really, really small low profile one. And I can get one of those bigger low profile ones that covers more of the motherboard and allows for a bigger fan that, that isn't quite so noisy. So yeah. now it's now it's kind of just my own fault in choosing a small heatsink. The GPU itself is performing quite admirably, especially after like adjusting the fan curves a little bit. And I did undervolt it a little bit too, to try and give it the best chance it had in that hot box of a, 
of a cabinet. Is this Guitar Hero? What am I looking at? I was going to um, say, this does look like Guitar Hero. So, guys, for the giveaway, you have to join through Twitch chat by typing exclamation mark play. That's where Marbles will get your entry. Twitch.tv slash Asus ROG. Give it away uh, another $20 voucher to gamesplan.com. A couple more questions. Is the A15 your affordable line of gaming laptops? Yeah, that's the Asus Tough line. Um, those are, we talked about those a little bit in some previous episodes. We don't talk about them a ton here because they're not ROG laptops. Mm -hmm. Um, those are a little bit more affordable. They've still got some good, uh, mid range power in them, but you know, you're not going to get the nebula display that you get on the M16, for example. Um, that's the kind of stuff that, that you only get on, uh, some of the ROG laptops. Um, and they're worth it. Trust me. But the tough line is excellent. Uh, thoughts on the Nebula HDR screen on the Zephyrus Duo. Jake, you haven't told me about it yet. I'm dying to see it. Huh? No, you got to wait. You're never going to send it to me, are you? You're going to want to keep that Duo for yourself forever. I'll let you have it for like three days. That's it. As a new, why do these types of PCs not have the keypad on the right? Um, because they're laptops. Most laptops don't have room for a keypad if you want so, to keep good spacing between the keys. Right, hold on. I know, go get it. So some larger laptops will have a keypad on them, um, but it depends on the size of the laptop. Usually 15-inch laptops, you're not going to see a ton of those because you'd have to make the, the keys or the keyboard smaller and more cramped, um, and, and we don't really want to do that. But Jake has a laptop here with a number pad on it because that's a 17-incher, right? This is, I got the duo. Cause oh, the duo has. I, oh, the duo. So, the duo, oh, the we've duo got two screens. The... They got this smaller um, trackpad here that can also act as a numpad. The camera is mad right now. It doesn't want to focus. So, we have this on some of our Zen books too. You press like a little uh, button or you press the corner of the trackpad and it turns into this little touch keypad, which is cool. And so that's something that we've done. We don't have that on a lot of the ROG laptops, but we have it on some of our Zen books, and I'd love to see it come over um, for other people's sake. I never use the numpad. I have no use for it. I actually forget how to turn it on. Uh, is it the little button in the corner? So like on my Zen book, hold on. Where's my Zen book? My Zen book's on the other side of the room, so I'm not going to go get it. But oh, yeah. there you go. There's like a little like button in the corner you kind of have to press down on and it turns into a numpad. Yeah, it's super cool. And then you can press your numbers, press that button and go back to touchpad. This is Roger Death says his older 15 inch tough has one. The spacing is pretty good on the main set. That's fair. I mean, so spacing is, is very personal. Some people have like go all into a tizzy if you shrink the right shift key and things like that <laughs> so it's really it's it's a choice there's also the matter of speakers too right yeah. so then if you put the numpad there then all of a sudden where you're going to put those speakers you're kind of relegated to some of the bottom firing speakers or things like that that aren't going to sound as good as the speakers that on the sides of the keyboard that you get on like the m16 so it's it's everything with a laptop is like deciding what what's more important and what kind of gets sacrificed, especially the smaller you go. Um, and to me, for gaming, the number pad is not as important as having good speakers, good keyboard spacing, a big ass trackpad, things like that. Because the number pad is number pads for spreadsheets, <laughs> and these laptops are for gaming. Well, you can look. Although forward... I suppose you could just have nothing but WASD on one side and a number pad on the other. Uh, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine that machine? Uh, you can look forward to more on the Zephyrus Duo very soon as we're going to do a deep dive on that. Probably next. Probably next. But that will be a different time slot. We're going to make sure we get with Sasha from our headquarters. I want really... Sasha to come on yeah, for that because yeah. I think he could he could show off. that the, the engineering that went into this year's Duo is so awesome and intense that Sasha needs to be able to sh show us some cool stuff. I'm hoping that he can show off like the hinge mechanism because it's really, really cool. Yeah, it's a really complicated. Uh, when you, yeah. yeah, when you actually see like all of the parts, it's much more complicated than last year's hinge. Okay. Marbles on stream giveaway begins. We've got 88 marbles entering the battle. Abraham going full Yita Skeeta. Okay. Through the portal. Jace, I think is the setting. Yeah, Jace 2010 in the lead right now. Cool. 
fun Kevin? Fun Kevin. He's so fun. He's oh, oh whoa. my goodness. Fun Kevin just got shown up. Uh what in the heck? Whoa, exploded. You made the game lag. Okay. What is even happening? Jace! Jace 2010. First oh, people just place. Eaten. Yeah, people got yeeted into space by Gamer Kid. First place to Jace 2010. Jace 2010, type in chat to claim your win. Congratulations on winning a $20 voucher to GameSplendid.com. We send these the week following, so the prizes will be sent via private message on Twitch next week on Monday. Dude, I'm looking at people doing all these different commands in chat. Someone's like, you know, a uh, boost and someone just wrote nitros. <laughs> and it reminds me, did you ever play back in the day I'm in like the AOL days, AIM days? Did you ever play like any of those chat room text based script games? Like I had some friends. There was a game that someone wrote that was like a Dragon Ball Z text based fighting game that you oh. would like someone would host. You'd played it in like an AOL chat room with like three of your buddies and you'd use like slash commands to pick a character and do different attacks and it would like calculate damage. And it was this just text based scrolling thing in the chat room. It was awesome. And this like reminds me of that. Wow, that was a, a different life. I I, for, I deleted that from my memory, but that was absolutely a thing I did. <laughs> Holy I, like, crap. I forgot about it until just now, too. Like, yeah, I had, like, almost deleted it from my brain. But then I was like, oh, man, I loved that in middle school. <laughs> man, I remember in middle school, like, me and my friend made our own paper, like, text-based RPG. Like, we... Oh man, Jake, we're nerds. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we are. Um, but hey, it's good to be a nerd because nerds rule we get the to world. Work here? Yeah, that too. That yeah, too. it's. Did you say tour the world? No, we rule the world. Oh, we rule the world. Well, you're going to be touring the world next week. Where are you going to be next week, Jake? I, I mean, I'm I'm not, I'm not going very far. I'm going to Boston, but uh, driving up to to Pax East, where we're going to have a booth at <laughs> at, at Pax East, and there's there's something really amazing happening there you guys are going to be excited about this because on sunday we're teaming up with intel and we're building a badass pc on the intel live stream and then we're giving that pc away so that pc will be eligible to win in us and canada that pc will it'll be a gleam giveaway so we're gonna build it there i'm gonna bring it home we're going to show it off on stream here. You guys will have like a week and a half to enter the giveaway. So tune in to the live stream next week. If you're, if you're not sure when, when to, to do it, you know, what we'll be telling you on stream. And then we're going to draw the winner live on Twitch, uh, on in the first week of May. I think May 3rd is what we're looking at right now, but the first Sweet. week of May is what we can say. So we're going to be giving away a, this is going to be the biggest giveaway we've ever done uh, on stream here. It's going to be a huge gaming PC that you can win on our Twitch. So twitch.tv slash asusrg. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure you follow our Twitch. We're doing a PC giveaway for US and Canada. Um, and it's going to be built live at PAX. So you can watch the PAX live stream. It'll be on this channel. It'll be on the Intel channel as well. Um, and I'm also going to be just walking around. Like I'm working at the booth. We're showing people our stuff. We're going to be just kind of hanging out with fans. Um, and uh, jamming some games. I'm, I, I'm, I'm working at the Ghost Runner booth. We've got a Ghost Runner oh, section nice. of our booth. So I'm going to be doing like time trials and stuff where there's prizes. Um, Good but thing you honed your Ghost Runner skills. I know. I, I know. Ago. I know. I'm, I'm like, I, I was actually practicing too because I know I'm going to have to like play. <laughs> um, but there's no, there's no link for the giveaway yet. It's, it's not live yet. This will be something we're doing at PAX. So you'll have to, you'll have to tune in. Um, but, yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. We, we've got some swag to give away. Uh, and I'm going to walk around the show floor when I can, like when I'm able to just kind of slip away. And I'm going to stream um, some some of PAX on, on our Twitch channel here, just with my phone, right? Just kind of like a mobile, mobile camera doing the thing. It's going to be a lot of fun. Guys, yeah, it's only U.S. and Canada because it's it's literally put on by the U.S. branch of ASUS. Yeah, That's sure. how these giveaways go a lot of times. On, yep. You know? US US event packs US branch yep. of the company. Yep. It is it's our it's our American office that's doing the giveaway so and and again shipping a machine that large is gets really complicated, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, that's the other thing. Um but 
Anyways, guys, that is going to conclude today's episode of Pulse. There will be no stream tomorrow. We are we are off for the Easter holiday this weekend. So I hope everybody has a nice... Oh, a, is that nice... what that's for? Yeah, it's Good Friday tomorrow, dude. I couldn't figure out why we had Friday off. I've never been in a job where I actually had Good Friday off. Yeah, a lot of a lot of times that it could be Easter Monday they call it off. Um, but you know, it just they just okay. since, since Easter cool. is a I mean, Sunday, we get a a holiday day to extend our weekend. So I mean, I'm um, into it. Yeah, yeah. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna mow my lawn. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm going to play lots of video games. Uh, I'm I'm going for after a, I mow my lawn, like a 40 mile bike ride. It's gonna be excellent. Oh, that's um, the opposite. Playing lots of video games. It okay. is the opposite, but I <laughs> I want to go outside. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, if you guys are going to PAX, come to the booth, say hi. We're going to, we're going to be there all weekend, all like Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, four days of the live event. Um, I know somebody already said they're going to give me some mochi. Yes. Yes. Nice. I'm, I'm a new Englander. So PAX is PAX East is like, it's home to me. Anyways, we'll see you guys next week. We'll have one regular live stream on Tuesday, I think. And then PAX East sprinkled in goodness Whitson have a good weekend man happy Easter you too, you too. peace